What is OpenXML document generation all about? Often it consists of taking some data source and injecting that data in some fashion into a word processing ML document, sometimes in a fairly complicated way. Document Assembler is a new module in PowerTools for OpenXML 4.0 that processes a template document that is constructed in a special way along with some XML data and produces a newly assembled document. It produces a complete, valid word processing ML document that can be sent to the end user, converted to another form such as PDF or XPS, or further processed by the OpenXML SDK or PowerTools for OpenXML, and so on. It has very good performance. Based on the complexity of your template document, you can generate thousands of documents per minute using this module. The way that I designed this module is that it always takes data from an XML file. Your job as a developer then is to somehow or other generate appropriate XML and then fire off document assembler to do the actual document creation. What are the typical things that need to be done when we are merging XML data into a template document? First of all, we certainly want to insert pieces of data into runs within content. For instance, at the top of this letter, we want to insert the customer name at this point in the document. By the way, I've colored these fields light blue so to see them better, but this coloring is semantically insignificant. Document Assembler simply looks for the appropriate patterns inside the text. Specifically, it's looking for this less than hash and a hash greater than before and after every field that contains metadata for this template document. And then it looks for specific varieties of XML within those delimiter strings. The inserted content takes the paragraph and run styling from the template document. Specifically, it takes the paragraph styling from the paragraph that contains the field, and it takes the run styling from the first character of the first delimiter. Here I have opened in Visual Studio the OpenXML PowerTools examples solution that contains all of the C Sharp examples that show how to use the various modules in PowerTools for OpenXML. There are two document assembler examples. The one that we're looking at here is document assembler 01, and we've got the code here to run the document assembler. As you can see, the code to actually fire off document assembler is really trivial. Let's run the example. As I said, we want to replace this specific string of text from this starting delimiter to this end delimiter and replace it with some content from the XML. And here is the XML. We can see that the name element contains the name Tai Yi. Let's run the example and see the results. I have to close it in Word because PowerTools nor any other program can open that document for processing if it's open in Word. I'll set document assembler 01 to the startup project and run the example. And there it ran. And here is the resulting document. You can see that the field was replaced with the name Tai Yi. Let's go back into the template document. I am going to change this entire paragraph to use heading one style. Save it, close it. Looking at the generated document, we can see now that that content has the heading one style. Another thing we typically want to do is to populate nicely formatted tables with data from the data source. For instance, here we have a table where we want to insert a list of orders from the customer. The way that you create such a table is in the paragraph immediately before the table, you put in a field with the appropriate delimiters that has an XPath expression that is going to select multiple elements, in other words, the repeating data that will be inserted into the table. 
You then put your table immediately following the field there, and then in each one of the columns of that table, you put another XPath expression, and this is an XPath expression that is relative to each of the elements that were selected in the select statement up here. So here we can see we're selecting orders slash order, and underneath that the description is dot slash product description. Looking at the XML, we can see from the root element, orders slash order is going to select two elements, this order with the number one and this order number two. And underneath that order, there is an element product description. And that's the data that is going to be inserted into that table. When we look at the generated document, we can see that the paragraph that contained that field that selected orders slash order, that paragraph is gone from the generated document. It was just metadata. We don't want to keep it around. And there is a new table that has as many rows as was selected by that first XPath expression. So for example, I can copy and paste that order. I'll make an order number three, and I'll make a new product description. We'll call this a skateboard. And I think we only need one of those, and that was ordered on September 29th. Save that, go back to Visual Studio, run the example, and look at the assembled document, and there we can see our new data. Naturally, you can format this table any way you like, and that formatting will flow through into the assembled document. Looking at this template document in detail, we can see that our table here has two and only two rows. The first row is, of course, the row that contains the row headers, and the second row is what I call the prototype row that contains the XPath expressions to fill out the data in that row. Another thing that we might want to do is generate some repeating content in the generated or assembled document. The way that you do this is you have a field that delineates the start of the repeating content, and you have another field that delineates the end of the repeating content, and all of the content in the middle, this is the content that will get repeated for every single element that is selected by this dot slash orders slash order XPath expression. And of course, in the repeating content itself, we can insert other fields that pull in additional data. Again, as with the tables, the XPath expressions that we'll see in repeating content is relative to the elements that are selected by this dot slash orders slash order XPath expression. And of course, we can use any variety of XPath syntax, including we can select data from an attribute. When we look at the generated document, here is the repeating content. We can see that the description for order number one is unicycle quantity three and the order date and so on. We can even nest repeating content if your scenario requires that. In addition, we might have content that we want to be conditionally included based on some data in the XML file. Here we have the start of conditional content and we have the end of conditional content. And in the start of conditional content, we specify the XPath expression to select the value that we're going to test on. And we have a match value. And if that match value equals the data that is retrieved from this XPath expression, then this content will be included. Looking up here, we can see high value customer is set to true. Here we can see the conditional content that was included because that high value customer element did match the value that we had put in our template document. And of course, within the conditional content, we can have other fields such as fields to replace runs. We can put tables in here. We can put repeating content in here and so on. In some theory of things, I could have used content controls for this system. However, nested content controls don't work very nicely. They were not designed to be nested. My first two implementations of this module made use of 
of content controls, but after struggling with them for some time, I decided that the only option was to use this approach of inserting special text into the document that is delineated by the less than hash and hash greater than. The justification for this syntax is, first of all, we need delimiters so we can determine where these fields are, where the metadata is throughout the template document. These delimiters, the less than hash and hash greater than, have the special characteristic that they are not valid lexically in XML, C Sharp, JavaScript, or most other languages. T4 text templates use these delimiters for this very reason. And then within the delimiters, we use small bits of XML to supply the configuration of the template. This XML is parsed by an XML parser, and then it is validated per small schemas that are embedded in documentassembler.cf. In documentassembler.cs, we can see the various schemas that documentassembler uses to validate that XML. This approach makes sure that we get good, valid XML in all of these fields. In some theory of things, I could have put the XML directly into the document without these delimiters, but this could make document assembler confused if the template document contains XML for some reason or another. I decided that it was more deterministic to have the delimiter characters and then have the XML that is valid validated per the schema. The question then arises, what happens if you have errors in your data or errors in the template document? Well, first of all, documentassembler.assembledocument has an out parameter template error. This is a Boolean parameter. And if this parameter evaluates to true after you're done processing using documentassembler.assembledocument, then you need to go look at your data and look at the template document to see what the issues you have with your particular setup. Let's go into our template document and I'm going to tell it that we're going to select dot slash name Z, which is not in the XML that is fed to document assembler. I run it and the example tells me correctly that there are errors in the template. And when we look at the resulting generated document, we see the content XPath expression dot slash name Z returned no results. We could have invalid XML. So if I didn't have a slash here, this would be invalid. So if I save the template document, run the example, it gives us the actual XML exception that is thrown by the XML parser. So it tells us unexpected end of file has occurred. Well, it's not really a file, but the XML parser doesn't know that. So anyway, you get the exact error as returned by the XML parser. Now I'll change that attribute to select Z, and that's an invalid attribute per the schema that validates this teeny bit of XML. And now we see the schema validation error at that point in the generated document. There are other cases where document assembler will report errors. So for instance, if you have this repeat section and you have this select attribute that contains the XPath expression, and if this XPath expression doesn't return any data, then it will not insert the repeating section and it will insert an error at this point in the template document indicating that no data was selected for that repeating content in the template. There's one additional small feature that I want to point out. Sometimes you want to specify a field where it doesn't report an error if it can't find the data in the XML. In that case, what we want to have happen is that the field itself will be replaced with nothing if it doesn't find this dot slash name. So the way that we do that is we insert another attribute here I'm going to change this back to name Z so it doesn't find it. You'll notice here that when I edited directly in Word, it inserted these smart quotes. One thing that you can do is when you insert a quote, 
you can immediately press Control Z and Word will change that back to a straight up and down quote. And that looks better in this XML that we have in this template document. But Document Assembler will properly process the XML here if you don't have a straight up and down quote, if you happen to have smart quotes. Now looking at the assembled document, we can see there wasn't an error and that name simply wasn't inserted into the generated document. This document assembler module, it actually has very high performance characteristics. As I mentioned, you can generate thousands of documents per minute. We can, in theory, make Document Assembler be a multi-threaded application. That wasn't the case with the non-open source OpenXML SDK because the OpenXML SDK relies on system.io.packaging and the system.io.packaging in the .NET framework was very much not thread safe. But relatively recently, I rewrote system.io.packaging. And in the new module, as far as we know at this point in time, it is thread safe. And we are actually processor bound in these types of processes. So one thing that you can look forward to seeing is an option in Document Assembler that makes this go multi-threaded so that we can generate even more documents. We can make use of multiple cores on a single computer and get ultra high performance. We will certainly be enhancing Document Assembler in the future. I can think of lots of things to do to Document Assembler, such as the ability to automatically insert images, such as the ability to pull in entire other documents at a particular point in the assembled document. We can certainly make use of Document Builder for this functionality. So keep watching this space. We'll keep you informed as we make enhances to Document Assembler. Thanks for watching. See you soon.